Good morning, folks. MIT article on ancient earth chemistry and what effects the various methane-related events had on the world. Speaking of methane, it's worse than CO2, tremendously undervalued in the climate forcing equation, and apparently about twice as abundant as we realized. That's kind of a big deal. Vesper, a Venus observing craft. Recently launched, we're going to investigate the solar wind driven particle loss from the high atmosphere. Did you think the Kepler satellite was dead? Yeah, so did everyone else. But they've developed a special maneuver using only two of the gyroscopic wheels. Remember, they're supposed to need three but they are going to be able to continue to deliver images. Quite the save. Outstanding article here about a reverse shock into a now dead star, exciting the remnants in producing x-rays. Looking bottom left, you see a large background object entering the frame. This appears to be Antares, a very bright star. Now what you can do in these cases is pull up Stellarium. You'll want to get the sun in about the noon position, Come to the bottom bar and click the clouds to eliminate the atmospheric interference. Antares is right there about to conjoin. You can also see from Ison's distance that it will cut into the Lasco frame soon here as well. For 99.99% of the world, Ison is invisible from the ground. Just save folks like the man who recovered the comet post-conjunction before NASA. Tail is blocked by solar light, but Bruce Gary did manage this image showing a tight comet with no major breakups. NOAA article here on the pitiful and now ending Atlantic hurricane season. Other side of the world stolen the show this year and continues to do so with the Indian coastline on tap. This makes three days of warnings here. Tropical remnants from Alessa at the north. Low atop New Zealand. Another line crossing Tasmania. Moisture funneled north to the Canadian west coast here. Actually got two right in a row. Snow on the ground in Columbus, low at the Great Lakes, creating the convergence due south of the Gulf states and shooting that moisture north. Looking east out to sea, we see another line actually swinging all the way up and then diving down onto the UK, Norway, Sweden, and Finland. Also got a low leaving Greece and one off the coast of Portugal. You might recognize the aim daisy, but you should recognize that this is not the North Pole. It's Antarctica, and we have noctilucent clouds at the bottom of the world as their season begins. Orange and yellow, solar wind density and speed respectively are dropping with no instability to our magnetosphere. Calm metrics on nice curves confirm the lack of space weather. Anyone sick of my talking about the quiet sun? It's understandable until you remember the potential winter enhancements and atmospheric collapse. Doesn't look promising for anything developing either. Even as ice on approaches perihelion, there are no earth facing spots capable of significant flaring. Pull the planetary positions from memory and combine with the current solar magnetics. The umbral and coronal blocking fields atop the coronal openings look closed. I will eliminate them here to show the green on the left crossing the equator of the sun. It's about where we are, what's facing Earth, and that opening is still in play today. The major quaking happened before the field snapped shut and they've yet to reopen, but we'll keep that watch up today. The show since yesterday's big rumble chose the southern point of the Americas has kept it on this half of the world, South and Central America rumbling at the west coast, with a five-pointer in Alaska this morning followed by a four-pointer off the Oregon coastline. Hopefully we've seen all the big ones we will see this round. Shots of our star to close, eyes open. No fear, it's 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.